Uh, Aaron, I might need your help uh, when I, after I present somewhere, you can ask some specific question you have, okay? Okay, yeah, please share your specific question. Um, I was trying to look into like the difference between like constructor and the operator. Is it just because the constructor you can access attributes with inside the object? Is that like in the pub in the private? Is that why you would use a constructor like versus a dot operator? That could be one of the reasons. Yes, that could be one important reason. So let me just be uh, uh, specific. When you have a when you have a a dot operator, you can only access to whatever in the public, right? That that you know. Okay, is important. Um, the dot operator, the dot after an object of any class, it can only access to the public section about everything about that class, which is including member function, including the attribute. Okay, so um, so that's certainly a reason that used, but, but in general, constructor is the function that get automatically called when the object was created. So instead of, even though sometime you have an object that you can use the operator, to actually set it, but it might be create extra work for the programmer because when he create an object, then he has to worry about you know what things to initialize. So we basically use the concept constructor to uh, because it's automatic. So it will automatically call the right constructor and to initialize everything. So that's kind of reducing the workload for the programmer. By the way, a lot of programming language design is try to automate or reduce the workload to not just reduce workload, but, but reduce the, the risk for, for us to make a mistake. And also this is this is the other part. I think you asked this, I feel uh, Aaron, the question is, is excellent as a programmer. Um, a lot of case, if I actually want to separate the concept of constructor, instead of using a lot of dot operation to do that myself, if I have like a 2000 different object and for each of the object, I'm actually going to do that. Guess what happened? If I realize there is a bug in my dot operator, then I have to find all those 2000 places and modify. But if I do it with a constructor, then I just go to the constructor, fix one place. So that's, that's another important concern is in object-oriented programming because all the objects, they share the class. So we want them to be in certain, in a single position regarding all the code, all the attribute they share. So when I want to make a change or fix a bug, I only have a one place to worry about. Yeah, that's another reason, okay. Does that answer your question somewhat? Yeah. Okay. All right. So do you have a, uh, I forgot your name. Oh, David. David. Yeah. You say you also have, have a, some question related to constructor, right? Uh, what, what What's your question? Like, uh, like, is it the constructor? So when I initialize it, is it because when I initialize the constructor, it like initialize the like class or it would initialize the object? Okay. That's also a very important question. Normally, I would say 99%, not 100%, 99%, it will initialize the object. But there are some unique situation is actually initialized the class as well. Okay, so that unique situation is called class attribute. So we talk about a member attribute, right? The member attribute is associated with object. And the, the object essentially, uh, each of the object has, has their own copy about the attribute. For example, each of the object I create in GPS class, they have their own copy of attribute, uh, sorry, latitude and the longitude, right? Okay, but there is an exception. Exception I haven't actually talked about is called class 
attribute means that this attribute is have a one copy associated with the class. And the thing is that all the object create from the, the class will share this attribute. That's called class attribute. In C++, when you declare something, you put a static in front of the, the attribute in the class, that become a, 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 a class attribute. Okay, for example, let me actually uh, give you an example. Now I can uh, show you this one. Okay, if I go to thing dot h, do I still have this things here? Okay, I might not have it, but that's okay. <clears throat> so assuming if you can see my screen and if I have a thing, I want to actually provide say uh, a, a class attribute. Let, let's say I want to present something called class name, name of the class, okay? So I don't really need that, but I'm just using this as an example. If I say uh, uh, the class name should be a string, so I would say class name. Okay, if I declare this way, this is what I call a member attribute for the object of this class. Okay, so if I declare like this, however, if I do this, <clears throat> If I do this static like this, that means this class name became a class, the uh, an attribute. This is a member attribute for the class. Shared among all the objects. Okay, so that that's that's too different. So the thing is that when I have this, I can actually do, I can set the value anywhere in the member function. So for example, uh, I can, if, if you want to do this in constructor, okay, uh, let me give you an example. If I go to thing.h, okay, thing.cpp, okay, so, in thing.cpp in the constructor, let me see what kind of constructor I will use. Okay, I will use this constructor, okay? And I will say, uh, I actually, should I say this? Let me try. Okay, I haven't done this for a while. This class name is equal to thing. Okay, if I do this, and I can do printf <coughs> percent s slash n, and then I will say this to the class name. I haven't teach you about C out, so I'm not going to use C out. I'm going to use printf at this moment, C string. I'm actually converted to C plus plus string to C string. Let me try to make it to see if I got any error. Oh, I this this was a, a error I have to fix because it was it was the 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 exam the, not exam the the lecture I did. Okay, so I'm going to comment this out. Okay, is undefined symbol. Why is this undefined symbol? Oh, I know. Okay, there is something I need to do in order to do that. Hold on. Give me one second. I have to say, I have to say here, I believe. So in order to use class attribute, I have to do something in the CPP, I believe. Over here, I have to say um, STD string. Uh, I 
if I have to say this thing, Colin, Colin, last name is equal to thing one. Let me see if this fixes this arrow I just saw. Okay, this is this is perfect. Okay, so so let me actually tell you what what I did. I did I modified two places. One is that I declare in the class thing there's something called static uh, class name. Okay, I first declare that, and then what I did in the thing uh, CPP. What I did is I actually also declare a variable looks like this. By the way, uh, yeah, this should be okay. Yeah, just std string thing. Because it's the class attribute, I also have to specify the syntax to be thing one, okay? And then inside the code in the constructor, I actually can access to the class name. By the way, um, if I have this line here, what do you think it will print out for this code, for this thing? What should be the printout for this one? Mm -hmm. It should be thing, right? Because I just set it to be thing, right? Let's actually try it. Uh, I didn't create any, did I create anything? I probably didn't create anything. So let me actually create something so it will be invoked that one. Okay, what should be the thing I create? Do I have a Swedish meatball somewhere? Yeah, I do. I do have a Swedish meatball. Oh, you know what? Because I create Swedish meatball with the, the other constructor with the name ownership Felix, uh, so I have to come back to here to modify this as well. So I have to copy this piece of this two lines of code because I'm actually invoking this constructor that has one argument. Okay, so now let's make it again and run it. Okay, now you see that it's actually print out. The class name is a thing. Okay, so let me do one more thing to make sure we understand. So now what I did, what I'm doing is that I'm going to actually remove this line. I'm not going to set it. And I just want to let, make sure we actually see this. So I actually initialize this global variable to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, so I'm just actually initialized the class name looks like that. And then I do a make, and then I run it. Now you see that it's actually printing thing, one, two, three, four, five, okay? So so this this means that I, um, um, I, in the constructor, David, according to your question, I actually don't have to initialize a class variable because I can do it here. But optionally, I can also modify a variable that's actually a class attribute in the constructor. That's my option. But usually we don't do that because, because every single object, they share the same class attribute. If I do it in the constructor, then essentially I'm, I'm duplicate what I'm doing. They're all using the same uh, place. Uh, so instead we should actually outside of the program, we have a one place to initialize once out of the scope, and then we just create it to share that attribute, okay? Okay, any other question <clears throat> about constructor? Yeah. Similar to like the Python underscore, underscore init, underscore. Right, right, right. We can use self and then right. create. Yeah, underscore, underscore init is just like constructor, and self is like this in in uh, in uh, C++, yeah. Um, I don't think there's like aside from constructors, but in the dot h file you had private, protected, public. What is the difference between like 
Protected, right. So we won't talk about protected until we talk about inheritance. Mm -hmm. So protected is really, so you think about public private is protecting from inside and outside object. But uh, there is a very important concept, inheritance. Almost all object the language have that uh, in the, in the uh, inheritance. Then I have to have a one extra layer of differentiation because I want to talk about my relationship with my parent class. So it means that what kind of attribute I will allow my child class to have direct access. So, so you think about that. I actually give the inheritance to my child. Uh, and, and the thing is that I said, okay, I have a bunch of variable, which is a public, which you can access, of course, but I have a bunch of private, even though you're my child, I don't want you to access. But then in between, there was something which I want them to access. Then I put under protected. So we will actually talk about this in whole scope uh, when, we, when we deal with that. Okay. Yeah. What, what perspective or pointer? Because when, when I talk about pointer, I can talk for three hours okay. uh, or three minutes, depending on what, what specific question about pointer you would like to know. Yeah. Um, the file and the star asterisk and all the rest of the file. Okay, in front of us, right? Let, let me just try to parse this, li this line. Will that be okay? Sure. Okay, so uh, this line, uh, let me actually do it this way. I'm actually going to do it here. So this line, let me tell you that how I'm going to parse this line. I'm going to parse the line looks like this. Okay, so, so the first one, the first, uh, let me do it this way, the token. I'm actually making multiple token. And then the rest of this is another token. So essentially what we're saying is that um, the, the first token file star is the data type, okay? And the second one, which is log F is a variable name, all right? So, so just, just want to let you know, this is, what is a data type? For example, I use, let me use another example. If I have integer, X, sorry, is equal to five, for example. Okay, and int is the data type. So this data type could be either file star, not Felix, file, file star, or it could be integer. That's the, that's the type. And then variable name, it could be uh, log f, it could be x, okay? So just syntactically, let's actually split into that. So essentially we say, what is, a, what is the data type? Integer, of course, is data type. And uh, um, double is a data type, but also a pointer is a data type. So now let's actually go back to the, uh, the, the question is that I said, a pointer is a data type, except I should specify what, what kind of data it is pointing to. So, so for example, I can give you example, this is called int star, which means that it's a pointer and this pointer is the type of the pointer is pointing to an integer, an int object or whatever. Int is a basic type. You can call it object or not. Okay. So file star is also a pointer and the type is actually a file. 
uh, by the way, file is a, a you can think about is a class as well. It contains about 152 bytes of information. Okay, for example, GPSDD star is also a pointer. And the type is actually pointing to GPS DD. So this actually could talk about inside the GPS dot CPP, we have this to the latitude, right? Is that right? And this here, this is also a GPS DD. Okay. It's, it is a GPS because what? Because of this is binded to the member function, which is a GPS DD. So this is a, also a pointer. So, so to understand pointer, first we understand how to specify a pointer. And so that the, the, the specification is usually when I, oh, okay, I, I know the, there is another uh, confusing stuff. Okay, so there are two things. One is called uh, to, to specify a pointer type. or to the reference a pointer. Okay, I will talk about what do I mean by the reference a bit later, okay? Because it is really, then I have to talk about the whole spectrum about pointer, but they both using star. They both using star. So let me give you an example. So specify a pointer type, for example, I say integer star, integer star I specify is a type. And then this is called int pointer is a variable is equal to say null, okay? So for example, I do this. This means that I'm actually specify a pointer type integer star, right? But when I want to use it, the reference, what I did is that, okay, I do this. I say print f, I want to print the, the content of the integer. And then I say star int PTR. This is dereferencing. Okay, the first one is try to specify. So, so to read it, the first star over here, it should go with the int. You should actually read it like this way. Okay, but this one is actually going to be associated with this with the left later because this star is operator. By the way, this star is a dereferencing operator. That means it should go in front of a pointer of certain type. And that star is a dereferencing. Okay, yeah. Um, well, maybe I just like can get confused, but uh, I thought for dereferencing, you have to use the AM sign. No, that, that's, that's a referencing, use the AM sign. Let me actually give you another example. So we're, we're saying that, okay, how to obtain the reference or address of a, uh, say, let me use an integer. Okay, how do I actually do that? Okay, so let me actually give you an example. For example, I say int x is equal to five. Okay, x is what? Is an integer, right? So now I want to actually get the reference or get a pointer out of the out of the x. So I say integer PTR is equal to n, sorry, n x. Okay. So if if now you actually do print, if now you do print of uh, star integer then you're going to get five. So let's look at this, this three line. X is a variable which contain the content five. And MX is essentially extract the address, extracting the address, the memory address of, of X. So if we, if we do the print statement of just in PTR, we'll get the memory location. Yes. So if we dereference it, then we'll get the 
what's inside the table, right. which is fine. Right. Let, let, let's actually try to run the program. Okay. In fact, it's it's uh, you're you're exactly right. Let's try to write a, a small program to see to get get a feeling about what's going on. I will call it uh, PTR test C. Okay. And I'm going to do uh, just very quickly include stdio.h. <clears throat> include stdlist.h. And then, ah, no, okay, I'll, I'll just write it. And then I will do integer main void. And I'm actually going to do integer x is equal to 555, five, five, okay? And then I'm going to do the integer star int ptr is equal to mx, okay? So now you can see, I, I, now let's try to print the value. Print f, if I do percent d, which is, I would just say x is equal to percent D and then I'm going to print X like this. But then I'm going to print the address of X. I will say address of X. I'm actually going to use percent X and then put the MX. Okay, let's, let's I will just say return zero. Okay, I write a very simple this program, let's actually try to test it. You know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to use this one, escapex shell. Okay, GCC, what's the program? PTR, test.c. Uh, maybe it's a percent. It's a warning actually, but I will just fix it. I think it is, let me just see if I can do percent P. GCC, PTR, test.c. Okay, now I can compile and then I just run a dial. You can see that now, if I print the first line, x is five, right? But if I say mx, you see that the, it's address and the address is uh, a lot of this, what we call hexadecimal. Okay, this is hexadecimal representation when you put a print the P. Okay, so now let's actually do more with this. So I'm actually going to print the value of int PTR. And also it should be percent P. So I just print int PTR, okay? So that's that's the that that should be the same value as the line number two, but then I would say the value of the referencing the referencing in the PTR this is going to be percent D. This is a star, right? This is the referencing. This four line you see that from X to MX to in PTR to the referencing of in the PTR. So let me just do this, control X. Okay, let's try to compile GCC, PTR, test, dot C. Okay, dot slash, a dial. You can see that I'm printing four line. The first line is a 555. And then I actually got this value over here. And then I got 555. Let's actually play more trick. So what happened if I actually change the value? So what I say is a star in PTR. Okay, so I'm actually dereferencing and modify say is equal to 777. I change the, the dereferencing of integer pointer to 777 and then I will print the X value. Then I print X value. Let's see what happened. GCC, PTR, test, dot C, and then dot slash A dial. Yeah, now you can see that. After I do the dereferencing change, I actually change the X as well. So this is a difference between 
called by value and called by reference because if I modify based on the referencing, it's actually going to change the original object because we're really touching the, the same memory. Yes. Um, I have a question. So sure. When you look at migrate, um, again, maybe I'm super unfamiliar with pointers. You have wild and then you have star f. So you just give me a second. Let me let me quit this part. Yes. My break is oh, here, right? Fine. I get it. Are you okay? Yeah. Let, let, let's let's look at the the place. My break that is here. Just want to make sure you understand. Maybe you got it already. Which yeah. which line of code? On minus line twenty, I'm not sure. I have a bunch of them. It's the yeah. file it's when you reference the file thing. So it's just the dereference. This one? Pointer F. Yeah. It's the most, right? right. But this one is type. This one is basically you should you should the way you interpret this is actually file star it's a pointer type right and the variable is f okay i mean just be honest with you some people actually use a different way of dereferencing stuff but um my experience this is the best way to read just associate the star with the data type right in front of that that's actually help you to to understand i mean of course there, there are people reference saying that because here we really try to declare what f is. So to me, it's a variable and the type of the variable. And I feel a, a pointer type is perfectly normal for us to understand the code. Of obviously, there are people saying that, well, that star should go with f because you are actually declaring a star f as the file. Means you declare something, but you really declare the dereferencing type. Which is to me is is harder to read. Yeah. I have a quick question about like malloc. So when you declare malloc, but if you do int asterisk pointer name, you right. can it in asterisk again malloc type. Right. Is the second int asterisk necessary? Can the compiler not know that it's gonna be let me I, I put it here. Let me tell you integer star uh say XYZ is equal to uh malloc, right? Yeah. And size of Integer. Is that is that the the the, well, the... I, was, I was just noticing when I was like uh, looking it up online. A lot of the examples have before the malloc a they do an integer like, star. Yeah, is that necessary? Uh it is it is necessary to get rid of some compiler warning, not syntax error, the compiler warning. The reason they put this is let, let me explain to you this a little bit. So if you do a man malloc, you see that what is the malloc is returning is a voice star. So voice star is generic pointer. So malloc is actually a typeless type of memory allocation. Okay. So therefore, remember it's a voice star. So if you look at this code, I if I don't have integer star, that's basically equivalent to say is a voice star, right? Because it return voice star. So when you assign a voice star to an in star, you're actually assigning, they're both pointer, but it's a different type of pointer. So that's why it will give you a warning saying that, hey, you're actually getting a, 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 a mismatch in terms of type of pointer. That This is actually another reason why uh, I said I like to associate the star with the beginning because there is, hey, hey take a seat, have a, have a seat. And that, that's why we actually do that. Yeah, that, that's why in the malloc, we actually do, this is called casting. In C and C++, we did a lot of casting because when we do this integer star, this is called casting, you kind of tell the compiler that, hey, I'm converting a voice star to an int star. And then therefore, in star assigned to in star is you shouldn't actually give me even the warning message. Okay, that's why you saw a lot of code. They have that in star. Okay, hey, I have to finish here and uh, let me thank you for all of you coming, including the online. I'm actually going to get rid of the